Hi, so today I'm going to talk to you as not only an entrepreneur, but also a scientist. And, uh, and I'm going to talk to you about the future of medicine. But first, to, uh, first we have to understand uh, where we're at in terms of healthcare. So where we're at in healthcare, not just in this country, but in every part in the world, is that we have uh, you know, a very, very large problem. And uh, within this country alone, 84% of our total healthcare cost is due to chronic disease. That's about $2 trillion, and of that $2 trillion, more than 50% of that is preventable. And even some studies show that it's uh, potentially as high as 80% preventable. But what the healthcare industry wants to do is they want to essentially force people to be compliant and you know, follow their, you know, take their drugs and take their meds and all these sorts of things. But I think there's two paths, and I think there's a shared path. And so the, the uh, way forward is not just forcing compliance, but also empowering people with pers to make personal choices with new tools. Uh, but before we talk about that, we first need to understand the way we do medicine today and the way we do healthcare today. So the way that we do it today is we essentially, you know, you've got uh, this uh, bubble on top, which is your blood pressure, which represents a symptom. Uh, you look for certain biomarkers, the doctor looks for certain biomarkers, and then they will treat it with drugs and, and other things. But in reality, um, our bodies are a system of systems. And so you have blood pressure that's connected to our autonomic nervous system, which is ANS, it's connected to our heart. All of these systems are connected together and they influence each other. But beyond that, it's also external systems too. Systems, you know, our nutrition, our stress, everything contributes to chronic disease over time. And so all of these systems are influencing each other. And at the same time, they're emerging dynamically and they're changing over time, they're forming rhythms, and they're also adapting as they change. So there's four things uh, that we need to do to really change the path of healthcare, and it's, it's a shared path. It's not just uh, the healthcare system, it's also all of us. And so all of us, these, these four things, I'm gonna talk about you know, two important trends. I'm gonna talk about what I'm doing as a scientist and what you know, we're doing at, uh, at UCSD, and I'm going to talk about things that industry can do to help motivate us to improve our health behaviors. So the first thing is that uh, today, um, cell phone technology is a ubiquitous technology. It's everywhere. There's more people in the world that have access to cell technology than they have access to drinking water, electricity, and toothbrushes. There's over 6 billion cell phones in the world today. And there's about a billion, and, and that's growing very quickly, with smartphones and tablets. Um, the other important component of this trend is that this thing called the Internet of Everything. I don't know who's heard about this, but really what this is all about, it's about smartphones and sensors that are connecting us all together and actually collecting data from our, our real lives and out there in the world. Uh, by the year 2020, there'll be more than 50 billion devices communicating over the Internet and over the wireless Internet, over the cell phones. And that's going to be collecting more data in one day than we've collected in the last 100 years. So in, we'll move back into the context of healthcare. So what that means in the context of healthcare is that there's new devices popping up every day, single motor devices like a scale or, or you know, a blood pressure cuff. But there's new devices that are popping up that measure multiple things, and they're, very, very, they're becoming very, very small. But there's also apps popping up that are you know, millions of apps uh, that are collecting our activity, lots of things. And all this data together is collected on our smartphone. So it becomes kind of our, our digital sixth sense, if you will. But now if I bring together that with the traditional data, I have a very powerful data set to be able to change our course in terms, of, uh, in terms of preventing disease. The second trend that I want to talk about is that healthcare is really becoming a social movement. You know, there's, people are getting engaged, they're getting involved, and, and that's really leading to change. So the first component of this is that you know, people are managing their health data now. Uh, they're getting more involved in managing their health data. They're demanding access to their health records. And they're also getting engaged with their doctor. They're going to you know, go on Google and search and say, you know what, I really don't want to take that drug. I really want to take a, you know, an Ayurvedic approach or some other you know, more holistic approach. And, uh, and they're also collecting data from the real world. This is the most important component to it. Because now if I'm collecting data from the real world, I can also you know, share that with my doctor and he can make better decisions for me or with me. <laughs> um, Health data is also being shared, and so people are sharing health data you know, with their friends, they're sharing, you know, comparing with their friends, they're comparing with athletes, and most importantly, they're starting to share with us, the scientists of the world. And that allows us to, uh, you know, to be able to really do something with this data. The other important trend is we're learning from each other. 
We're learning from each other. You know, we're, uh, this is an example of a Facebook site. And so we're learning what works for others, what doesn't work for them. We're learning about, about you know, how-to content. We're learning um, you know, about health records, and, and we're learning uh, our health reports, we're learning tips and tricks. Uh, but the most important component of this is that we're, we're basically rating all of this stuff. And so we're putting a rating system around this, making people more accountable for the products and services they deliver to us. The, uh, now comes the science component. The science component is, is uh, where it becomes very interesting because if we make small changes in our lives earlier, they can produce very big outcomes. And we can avoid things like heart disease and cancer and all of these things uh, put together. Um, as, I said, as I said earlier, that's you know, 50, 60%, 70% because it's uh, preventable if we just make small changes in our lives. So now we're gonna take and we're gonna put all that data together. And if I look at that on a simple graph, you know, I can't really make sense of that data, but you know, that's what the scientists are for, is we're trying to make sense of this data. And so we're trying to answer a few simple questions like, you know, what don't we know about, uh, you know, about how our environment interacts with us? We're trying to answer, you know, how, do I, you know, how am I doing over time? And we're also trying to answer you know, a question of uh, you know, what's working for me and what's not working for me. It's very personal now. And so this is an example of a colleague of mine. He's a type one diabetic. He's a scientist, and he's also a cyclist. And, uh, and he, uh, he did this ride in, uh, in Colorado. And as you can see, up at the top of the mountain, this is done on Google Earth, uh, you start to see that the, the shaded lines are starting to turn green. Uh, this is indicating that his, his glucose is dropping very, very low at a dangerous level. Uh, his lines are all, the lines are also getting fat, which indicates that uh, his heart rate is going up. So what we essentially learned from this is that elevation affects both glucose control and also his, uh, his heart rate. We're also exploring other areas with this. So we're trying to explore areas of trying to do, make this more real time so I can do things like uh, look for real time hydration and, and lots, of other, uh, lots of other interesting things that can help me be healthier. The second uh, area of uh, research that we're looking at is, is something that's called heart rate variability, which looks at something called estimating your heart age. And so I did uh, basically an experiment with this and I estimated my heart age and when I'm on vacation and relaxed and everything, um, my heart age is essentially 15. Uh, by the way, my wife says this is also my emotional age. <laughs> but, um, but what we really wanted to do here is we really wanted to find out what happens in real life. So we created a system so that we could blend a smartphone with a very inexpensive device, a heart rate monitor, to see what happens. So I went out in the world, and I found out that when I'm at work, uh, effect my stress level goes way, way up, and my heart age now becomes 60, which is uh, a lot older than I really am. Um, but what we learned from that is that that um, we can now provide personal cues, like I can have, you know, now instead of reading you know, academic papers at night before I go to bed, I listen to meditation or do meditation. I've switched to taking you know, two grams of fish oil um, daily, and I go surfing more, surfing more often. I go surfing daily now. Uh, so this has really helped reduce my sensitivity to stress, and now when I take that same measurement, my stress sensitivity, or my heart age, is now 32 in that same environment. And so the final piece that I want to talk about this is where industry can help motivate us. And so there's three pieces to this, or three components to this. One is, is by setting more meaningful goals for us uh, instead of, uh, instead of uh, uh, what they're setting. Um, it's also about um, providing personal rewards for us individually. And it's also about us being aware of what's going on with us uh, so that industry can now take advantage of this opportunity and really sell us what we need and not what they think we need. And so the healthcare industry is, is really pushing for this notion of a health score. This is kind of like a credit score. So my health score is 120. Um, I don't know if I'm 50% compliant or not, but this is essentially trying to measure whether I'm you know, doing the things that I'm supposed to do. And sometimes I probably am less than 50% compliant because I don't go to the gym and, and do the things that I'm supposed to. But really what I'd like is I'd like more meaningful goals. I want to go on a bike race in, in three months. So I, that's a meaningful goal for me. I want to become a better surfer. So that's, again, a meaningful goal. And I want to be happier. And so by using these algorithms that we're developing, we're able to map you know, what we can do to influence these meaningful goals and what we can change in our lives to, you know, to affect a better outcome. The, the second component of this is that the thing that industry can do is that now that my smartphone knows that I like to surf and they know where I like to surf, uh, my company can offer me a free surfing vacation in Costa Rica because it already knows that I want to go to Costa Rica. And they can show me that I'm slowly, incrementally moving towards that goal, which is motivating me to do you know, more towards my health and take care of my health. 
Uh, they can also take some of that money that I'm paying, you know, that uh, $1,000 a month that I'm paying them for health insurance, and they can put part of that towards a health savings plan, which is con contributing to my, um, you know, my long-term retirement or, or whatever I really want to uh, contribute that to. Um, and then I can see how I'm uh, improving on that over time. Uh, but what they can also do is now they can create healthier ads, and those ads can be targeted at me. They can, be, they can tell me that, hey, I know you like to go to Quiznos because your phone was at Quiznos, and, uh, and there's a 10-minute walking distance you can go to the Quiznos, and here's a coupon for, uh, for going there, and they know that it, my phone knows that it's lunchtime. My phone also knows that I shop at Henry's, and it also knows that I need fish oil, because I showed you that earlier, and so it can give me a 40% discount next time I'm at Henry's. And the final component to this is, is us really being aware of what's going on in our lives. And so by wearing simple devices like Fitbit or even from, collected from our phone, it can collect our activity levels, our steps, and everything else. Um, so I can, I can see that my goal is uh, set at 10,000 steps for today. I've reached 9,000 9, or 93% of that. And so my smartphone should be able to tell me to, you know, okay, go to the gym. It should be able to tell me to, uh, you know, uh, park a little bit farther away from work now and just walk across the parking lot instead of parking right in front and taking the boss's spot. And it should also tell me to, uh, to take the stairs instead of the lift or the, uh, or the elevator, whichever you prefer. And then finally, it should tell me to, you know, eat less fat, obviously. And that really adds up to big outcomes. So if we all work together, you know, both the healthcare system trying to create a better, you know, more quality experience, and us trying to you know, gather data and using scientific evidence to help us get better information about how we make choices in our lives, we can effectively change the way that healthcare is done, and we can change medicine as well as the way that it's done too. Thank you.